Hello students, welcome to Aditya Academy. Now we are back with our next chapter from NCRT, which is chapter 7, Coordinate Geometry. In this video, we are going to introduce all the terms and new formulae that you are going to learn in this chapter. In this chapter, we, are, we will be learning about distance formula and section formula, which are new in class 10. And since we had learned about the Cartesian plane in the junior classes, so we will be starting with the introduction of Cartesian plane, how to locate the points and their coordinates, and then find we will be learning to find the distance between two given points. So we start with now this chapter starts with the Cartesian plane, the concept of Cartesian plane. You must have heard this word in class 8 as well as class 9 when we had learned about the graphs. Right? So, Cartesian plane, what is a Cartesian plane? A plane, any plane, a two-dimensional plane, 2D plane, that means a plane or a plane surface or any surface which has length as well as breadth is called a 2D plane or two-dimensional plane. Right now, we are restricted to only length and breadth. When we will move to class 11, we will be learning about 3D planes, which are called spaces. So, right now, we are only dealing with two dimensions, that is length as well as breadth. So, any surface, like if you are writing on a paper, on a notebook, it is a 2D plane because you can see that a paper has a length as well as breadth. The board I am writing on, the screen you are watching, all these are two-dimensional planes, right? So, if a two-dimensional plane is cut down by two perpendicular lines, like this is your x-axis, horizontal line is called x-axis, the vertical line is y-axis. So, when we divide a plane by two axes, see, singular of this line is called axis, either x-axis or y-axis. These are called singular word is axis and we, when we call about axis, that means two or more. So, right now axis means plural, that means both the axis. So, x-axis, the horizontal one is called x-axis. The vertical is called y-axis. So, when we cut down a plane by these two perpendicular lines, the angle between these two lines is 90 degree. This plane has been divided into four different parts. Each of this part is called a quadrant. Right? Quadrant. quadrant. So, these are four quadrants. Let me explain you. The point of intersection of these two axes point of intersection of the two axes of the two axes is called the origin origin right so this point is origin i'm writing o here at this moment both the axes represent 0, 0. That means the address of x axis at this point is 0 as well as the address of y axis at this point is 0. I am writing few numbers. This to the right of 0, we have positive numbers on x axis, and to the left of 0, we have negative number line, negative part of the number line, right? And similarly, to the upwards on the y axis, we have positive part of the y axis, and to the downward of 0, this is negative 1, negative 2. Below origin, y-axis represents a negative part, right? So, now I have numbered few digits on x-axis as well as y-axis on both the parts, positive as well as negative. This point of intersection of the axis is called origin, right? And now you can see that now we have four different areas. 
this is called the first quadrant this is called the second quadrant this is the third quadrant go anti clockwise 1 2 3 4 these are four quadrants of this cartesian plane right so when we expand this when we expand these axes we can draw as much as many numbers on both the axes so this can be extended infinitely now these are the four quadrants of this cartesian plane now if we have to locate a point on this cartesian plane how do we do that see any point like a if i write a is 2 comma 3 this is the way a point is represented on a cartesian plane the point is represented by a capital letter in bracket it is represented by two numbers the first one denotes the x axis address or you can say this is x coordinate the second one denotes y coordinate right so any point any point p is represented as x comma y x comma y means the point p p is a capital letter denotes a point b p the first the first address is about the x axis what is the address of the point regarding to x axis is represented by the x coordinate and the address of that point on the y axis is represented by y coordinate right so this is the symbology of a point so now if i have to plot a point on this cartesian plane how can we do that let's say i have to locate point a which is 2 comma 3 a is 2 comma 3 now see on the x axis i have to go on positive 2 so starting from origin starting from origin if x coordinate denotes a positive point move towards right on the x axis so this is 1 this is 1 this is 2 so this is the point 2 on x axis after moving on x axis i have to go on y axis and on y axis this point represents 3 units the address is 3 so i have to go 3 units from this point so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 so after coming from 0 to 2 on the right i have moved from 2 to 3 on the vertical part so this point this point is a which is 2 comma 3 right so always move on x axis first then on y axis so i have moved 2 on the x axis then for y since it is positive i have to move upwards if the number is negative i have to move downwards same is the case with x axis also this is how i have located point a you can see that since both the x and y coordinate are positive from this you can summarize as if x coordinate is positive y is positive this area represents this is x positive this whole is y positive so first quadrant represents all the points which have both x and y coordinates as positive numbers right let us take one more example i take b as negative 2 comma 2 now if i have to locate this point b is negative 2 comma 2 so it means i have for point b the x coordinate is negative 2 so from origin i have to go towards left which represents minus 2 is this point minus 1 minus 2 now i have come here right i have to for y coordinate i have to go two units upwards upwards means since y is positive i have to locate the number on the upward side of the origin so from negative 2 i have to go here till positive 2 so combining here this is the point b which is negative 2 comma positive 2 so you can see that we can plot such many more numbers but you have learned this that is i am that is why i am only giving a short recap so this is x coordinate this is y coordinate so when x is negative 
and y is positive. Such numbers are located in the second quadrant of the Cartesian plane. Then I take a point C, C which is negative 2, negative 3. Now how can we locate this? C is negative 2, right? So when I have to plot this from origin, I have to go negative 2, that means here, left. Left, where which is, but we have minus 2 here. For y-axis, we have to go negative 3. Now y has become negative. That means we have to come downwards from x-axis. Negative 3 is from here, it is here. So you can see that this point, the x-coordinate is negative 2 and y-coordinate is negative 3. So this point represents negative 2 comma negative 3. So you can see that if x and y both are negative, those points will be plotted in the third quadrant of the Cartesian plane. Right? And if I take a point like uh, D, which is 3 comma negative 2. So this is your fourth point D. For that, if I have to plot from the origin, I have to move three positive units. So go towards right. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3. I have reached here. Now you have to go for negative 2 units on y-axis. That means you have to come downwards. So negative 2 is 2 units below the x-axis. So 3. This x is positive 3 and this y is negative 2. So this point represents D which is x positive 3 and y negative 2. Right? This way we plot points on a Cartesian plane. So you can see that if x is positive, y is negative, those points are plotted in the fourth quadrant of the Cartesian plane. So I hope the system of uh, quadrants and coordinates and how to plot them, that is clear to you. Next is coordinates of a point. Like if I have like a is 2 comma minus 3, right? So without into getting into the quadrants, like if I plot this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Since you have dealt with all these things in junior classes, you should be able to comprehend orally in which quadrant that point will lie. So if 2, 2 comma minus 3, A is 2 comma minus 3 will be here, right? And if I have a point B, B is 3 comma or minus 3 comma minus 3. You must have learned that if both the numbers are negative, it lies in the third quadrant. So X is negative 3, Y is negative 3. This is like this. You can draw a line. So this is point A. This is point B. A is 2 comma minus 3. And this is 3 comma minus 3. Right? This is how we locate point. And if you are supposed to make uh, quadrilateral by joining 4 points, you can similarly plot all the 4 points and then join them to analyze what kind of figure it is. Moreover, if A is a point 2 comma minus 3. This x, this is called the x coordinate, x coordinate, which is also called abscissa of that point. The second one is the y coordinate, and this is also called the ordinate of that point, ordinate. X coordinate is also called abscissa. Y coordinate is also called the ordinate of that point. Right? So, I hope this is clear now. This was a basic. We have already learned about all these things. Now we come to the next formula, which is new in this class. This is the distance formula. Like I told you, if we have two points, P and Q, and we have to find the distance between these two points, right? 
Now I am not locating exactly if let's say this is point P, which is represented as x1 comma y1. This is point Q, which is x2 comma y2. Irrespective of their uh, signs and locations, if we have to find the distance between the points P and Q, that PQ can be represented as x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Right? If we know the coordinates of both the points, their distance can be found by using this formula. Where x1 is x1 is the x coordinate of P and x2 is the x coordinate of Q. y1 is the y coordinate of P and y2 is the uh, y coordinate of Q. See, this can be while solving the question, sometimes children make this mistake like you take x2 minus x1 instead you take x1 minus x2 doesn't matter because after taking the difference, if this difference is negative, it will be positive on the other way. But the square actually covers that gap. If you even do it the other way, x x1 minus x2, the square makes it the same. But you, while solving these questions, you need to be very careful. Whatever order you are maintaining, try to do it this way. See, if it is PQ, always subtract the coordinates of the first one point from the second one. Like here we have x2 minus x1. This is x2, y2. So try to maintain this balance initially so that you are not mistaken. Otherwise, calculation mistakes are very common in this chapter. So x2 minus x1 means you have to subtract the coordinates of the first point, first letter from the second letter. This way, a homogeneous system or uh, uniformity can be maintained while solving the questions. Now let us practice this question. Find the distance between the points P, which is minus 2, minus 3. Q is minus 3, comma, minus 4. So for PQ, we have learned that the distance formula is x2 minus x1 whole square and y2 minus y1 whole square. See, this is your x1, this is y1, this is x2, y2. So what is x2 here? x2 is negative 3 minus x1. x1 itself is negative 2. This is square. y2 is 4 minus y1, which is negative 3. This sign is for the formula. And if the coordinate, the second coordinate is negative, write it in a bracket. Or solve it orally, but be careful regarding using the signs. This is minus 3 plus 2 square plus 4 plus 3 square. So we have... Minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 raised to the power 2. 4 plus 3 is 7 raised to the power 2, which is 1 plus 49. So, square root of 50. Now, you can simplify this. 50 can be written as 2, 25, 5, 5, 5, 1. So, you can take out 1, 5 common from the square root. This becomes 5 root 2, 5 root 2 units. If unit is given in the question, you can write that centimeter or meter. Otherwise, you have to write this also. If there is no unit given, write a general unit, whatever it is. So, distance is always represented in the basic unit. Now, 5 root 2 unit is the distance between P and Q. Next question says, show that the points A, B, C, D are the vertices of a square, right? So, we have A as 1, 7, B is 4, 2, C is minus 1, minus 1, D is minus 4, 4. Now, to prove a quadrilateral being a square, what we have to do is all the sides of a square are equal. So the very first requirement is that we have to take the distances of all the four sides like AB. Now what is AB? Square root of x2 minus x1. 
basic formula is x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square right now what is x2 in this case x2 minus x1 if we are looking for a and b this is your x2 4 minus 1 now i am trying to do it already 4 minus 1 will be 3 square 2 minus 7 is negative 5 square right which is equal to 3 square is 9 and this is 25 minus 5 square is 25 so this becomes root 34 now what is the value of bc bc is b and c are the two points so now this is your x2 y2 this one and this is your x1 y1 minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5 square minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 square so here we have 25 plus 9 which is also root 34 so तुम चले जाओ बेटे डिस्टर्ब मत करो ठीक है BC then we have CD BC is also root 34 then we have CD for C and D this is your x1 y1 this is your x2 y2 so now we have minus 4 minus minus 1 minus 4 minus minus 1 becomes minus 4 plus 1 square and 4 minus minus 1 that is 4 plus 1 whole square so we have this is minus 4 plus 1 which is minus 3 whole square that is 9 5 plus 4 plus 1 5 5 square is 25. This is also root 34. Then we have DA. AB, BC, CD and DA. So for DA, A is your X2, Y2. This is your X2, Y2 and this is your X1, Y1. So 1 minus minus 4 is 1 plus 4 whole square. 7 minus 4 whole square. This is 5 square plus 3 square which is again 25 plus 9 that is root 34. So now you can see that AB is equal to BC is equal to CD is equal to DA. When all the four sides of a quadrilateral are equal it may be rhombus or it may be square. So, right now we are only dealing with the sides. So, it may be rhombus or square. Rhombus or square. But we have to prove that this, uh, this setup of four points represent a square. So, rhombus is done. For square, we need to have one more additional property. Till we have done to the distance formula. So, I am not taking uh, the relationship of angles here. What? Uh, how can we prove... Uh, how can we prove a quadrilateral being a square? See, what are the properties of a square? All the four sides are equal. All the four angles are 90 degree and diagonals are equal. So, what we can use? Either we can say that if these two, the square of these two sides add up to the square of this line. That means the Pythagorean, Pythagoras theorem is verified for any pair, this one or this one. It means this is a rhombus. This is a square. Now we have proved that all the four sides of this quadrilateral are equal. That means that quadrilateral may be a rhombus or it may be a square. Now to confirm that it is a square, we have to we have to prove that all the, either all the four angles are 90 degree or you can say that any one angle is 90 degree because if one angle becomes 90 degree, it becomes a rectangle or a square and if all the sides are also equal, it is a square for sure. Or we can say that if the diagonals of this quadrilateral are equal, it will be a square. 
because we know that diagonals in the rhombus are never equal. So I am doing this for diagonals now. If A, B, C, D, D, A are the consecutive sides, let's see. If A, B, C, D, these are the consecutive sides of this quadrilateral, then for diagonals we should have A, C and B, D. Diagonals are always separated by one, skipping one letter. Like if A, C, A, C is formed by skipping B from. So A, C represents the diagonal. Similarly, B, D is skipping C. So B, D is a diagonal. So I am looking for the length of A, C. What is the length of A, C? Take this as x1, y1, x2, y2. Minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2 square. Minus 1 minus 7 is minus 8 square. So this becomes 4 plus 8 square is 64. So this is root 68. So I am not getting into simplification of this. Next is BD. BD is the second diagonal. So take this B and D. Now this is x2, y2. This is x1, y1. Minus 4, minus 4 is minus 8 square. 4 minus 2 is 2 square. This is 64 plus 4, which is also root 68. Right? So you can see that AC is equal to BD. So what we have proved is all the four sides of this quadrilateral are equal. That means either it makes up for rhombus or a square. Now to confirm that it is a square, we have proved that the diagonals of this quadrilateral or parallelogram are equal. And since they are not equal in case of rhombus, we can confirm that ABCD is a square. ABCD is a square. Right? Next question is, find a relation between x and y such that the points, point x, y is equidistant from the points this and this. Okay, we first of all label them as point P is taken as x, y, A as 7, 1 and B as 3, 5. Find a relation between x and y such that the point P is equidistant from the points 7, 1 and 3, 5, A and B. So they may be on the same line like P is here, A and B are here. Or it may be some other way like P is here, A may be here and B may be here. But the distance PA is equal to PB. The given condition is point P, point P is equidistant from A as well as B. That means the distance between P and A should be equal to the distance between P and B. This is the relationship between these three points. Now we have to build a relationship between X and Y. Now if P is X comma Y. A represents 7 comma 1. B represents 3 comma 5. Now develop the relationship. I always prefer to just have this rough picture in front of you so that while you are putting these values in the formula, you do not make any careless mistake. Don't try to always write it this way without doing this picture. This ensures accuracy of your question. Now, PA is equal to PB. PA is equal to PB. For PA, A is the second point. This is your x2, y2. 7 minus x whole square plus y2 minus y1 is 1 minus y whole square. And this is equal to PB. This is your x2, y2 in this case. 3 minus x. 3 minus x whole square. y2 minus y1 is 5 minus y whole square. So since we have the whole square root on both the sides, left as well as right, we can remove these squares and simplify the two equations. Now I am opening these brackets. This is a minus b whole square. This is a square plus b square 
minus 2ab 2 into 7 into x that is 14x. Now open this bracket. See, I am only removing these two square signs. Okay, let me do it in a little bit detail. In the first step, you can remove the squares. So, we have 7 minus x square plus 1 minus y square is equal to 3 minus x whole square, 5 minus y whole square. This is a square plus b square minus 2ab. Now I am opening the second bracket. This is a square plus b square minus 2ab. On the RHS we have a square plus b square minus 2ab. Now open this a square plus b square minus 2 into 5 into y is 10y. Now you can simplify this. This x square and y square, x square and y square got reduced. This is 49 plus 1, 50 minus 14x minus 2y. And the RHS 9 plus 25 is 34 minus 6x minus 10y. Now bring all these terms to the same side. This is negative 14x, positive 6x. Negative 2y here, this positive 10y goes here. And then finally we have positive 50 and negative 34 is equal to 0. This is minus 14 plus 6 is minus 8x. Minus 2 plus 10 is plus 8y. 50 minus 34 is plus 16 is equal to 0. So now we can further simplify this by taking negative 8 common from this whole equation. So we get x, the signs becomes re become reversed because we are taking negative 8. Negative 8 divide, divides negative 8x, we get x. This becomes negative y only. And this becomes negative 2 is equal to 0. So this is the relationship between x and y. You can write it this way or you can write this as x is equal to y plus 2. Anyway, this is the relationship between the variables x and y which satisfy the given condition that PA and PB are equal. Right? Next is our section formula. Section formula is used when we have a line segment joining two different points and some other point P is dividing that line segment into a fixed ratio. Right? Now let us see that we have A and B. A with the coordinates x1 and y1. B with the coordinates x2 and y2. So if we have A and B like this and P is a point we are here, we are talking about the internal division only. External division is something else that we will be dealing in class 11. External means if a point is P is here and it is in the exterior of AB but still it is dividing these two points externally. That means the ratio is taken from external point P to A and B. So right now we are not doing this. Internal division is, that means that point P lies on the line segment AB or interior. That is why it is called internal division. So if AB is a line segment with coordinates x1, y1 and x2, y2 respectively, then the coordinates of point P given by x and y can be found using this formula. The ratio in which it is dividing AB, dividing AB is m is to n. So we write coordinates of P as x. This can be found by see m into x2. First ratio, the letter 1 coordinate. Second ratio and the former 1 coordinate. So this is m gets multiplied by x2 n gets multiplied by x1 and this is divided by m plus n. This is how we find the x coordinate of point P 
P, which is dividing AB in the ratio M is to N. Similarly, for the coordinate Y, M gets multiplied, M is the former ratio, gets multiplied by the letter coordinate M by 2. Letter ratio, former coordinate N gets multiplied by Y1 divided by M plus N. So, this way you can find the coordinates of point P. See, this is the formula how to find the coordinates, but this will also be used to find the ratio or some other relationship might be given in the question and you have to find some other constant in the question, right? This is a specialized version of this formula. Like if we have a line segment A, like AB, where A represents x1, y1, B represents x2, y2. Consider two points A and B and assume P divides internally in the ratio M is to N. Right? That is PA upon PB is equal to K is to 1. This is the simplified version. Why I am telling you this? See, when we have to find the ratio, See, the relationship remains the same. The relationship uh, between A, B and P is the same that we had learned in the last slide. The only thing is, if in a question, if we have to find ratio, when the coordinates of P are given to us, that means here the coordinates are given, coordinates of all the three points are given, instead we have to find the ratio, then it is advisable not to use two variables m and n because these if these two things are unknown the calculations become more to avoid that what we do is we consider k as some variable and take the second ratio part as one so in this case we only have to look for k right so this formula is always used when we have to find when we have to find the ratio ratio in which point p point p divides line segment ab please keep this in mind line segment ab that means P is given to us, this is given to us, A is given to us, B is given to us. Instead, we have to find M and N, the numbers in which this line segment AB is being divided by point P. So, instead of taking M and N, I am assuming the first ratio to be a variable and the second one to be 1. How we can use this, we will learn in some question. So, in that case, the formula remains same. See, the k gets multiplied by x2 and this 1 gets multiplied by x1. So, this is kx2 plus 1 into x1 is x1 divided by k plus 1. The concept remains same. The formula, the same formula that we had learned in the last slide is being applied here. For y coordinate, this k gets multiplied by y2, former ratio, letter coordinate. Letter ratio, former coordinate. Y gets multiplied by Y1 divided by K plus 1. Right? So, we'll be using this formula when we have to find the ratio in a question. One more modified version of this section formula is when we have a line segment X1, Y1. B is X2 by 2. So, when we are given A and B coordinates and we have to find the midpoint of this line segment. Now, what is a midpoint? A midpoint is a point which divides this line segment into two equal halves. Equal halves means in that case, the ratio becomes same for both the parts. Like PA is to PB is 1 is to 1. Both are equal. PA 
and PB are equal, in that case the ratio of PA and PB is 1 is to 1. Right? So, this is a very simplified version. So, we simply apply this formula here. For the coordinates of P, x, y, how can we do that? Apply the same section formula mx2 plus nx1. 1 into x2 is x2 plus 1 into x1 is x1 divided by m plus n which is 1 plus 1, 2. So, x becomes x1 plus x2 by 2. Similarly, y is 1 into y2 is y2 plus 1 into y1 is y1 divided by 1 plus 1 that is 2. So, the coordinates of midpoint of any line segment having coordinates x1, y1 and x2, y2 is given as this y1 plus y2 by 2. So, P becomes the midpoint. The formula for the midpoint. This is the shortest uh, way in finding for finding the midpoint of a line segment. Simply take the sum of both the coordinates and half it. Right? So, let us do some questions here. Find the coordinates of the point which divides the line segment joining the points a which is 4 comma minus 3 and b which is 8 comma 5 so i am trying to locate this this is 4 comma minus 3 b represents 8 comma 5 and Find the coordinates of point which divides the line segment joining this A and B in the ratio 3 is to 1. Now M and N here are given to us as 3 and 1. This is point A, this is point B and let this be the point P which is dividing the line segment AB in the ratio 3 is to 1. Here we have to find the coordinates of point P. So I am simply using the formula coordinates coordinates of p x comma y are given as x is equal to mx2 plus nx1 upon m plus n now use it here this is your m m into x2 that means 3 into 8 plus n 1 into 4 letter ratio form a coordinate upon 3 plus 1. So, we have 8 3 is a 24. 4 1 is a 4 upon 4. This is 28 by 4 which is 7. For y, formula is m y 2. Form a ratio, letter coordinate. Add it to letter ratio, form a coordinate upon m plus n. Now, 3 gets multiplied by, this is 5. 3 gets multiplied by 5, added to 1 gets multiplied by negative 3 upon 3 plus 1. This is 15 minus 3 over 4. So, this is 12 by 4, that is 3. So, we have found x and y both. So the co coordinates of point P, x comma y is given as P, 7 comma 3 is the point which divides the given line segment AB in the ratio 3 is to 1. Right? Next question is, in what ratio does the point minus 4 comma 6 divide the line segment joining the points a and B. Here we have to find the ratio. A is minus 6 comma 10. B is 3 comma minus 8. And let P be a point given by minus 4 comma 6. I had told you earlier when the coordinates of A, B and P are given and you have to find the ratio in which P is dividing AB. 
in that case instead of taking m and n as two different ratios take this as k is to 1 it becomes easier you can do it by using m and n it works but it becomes easier if you take only one variable and solve it so in this case let the ratio be let the ratio be k is to 1 right they are asking us the ratio let the ratio be k is to 1 now apply the formula that has to be the same coordinates coordinates of point p so x can be written as the same thing the first former ratio letter coordinate k multiplied by 3 is 3k right plus 1 multiplied by letter ratio former coordinate 1 multiplied by minus 6 is minus 6 divided by k plus 1 and y is represented by this k gets multiplied by former ratio letter coordinate minus 8k letter ratio former coordinate plus 1 times 10 is 10 upon k plus 1 so now we have used the same formula the only difference is instead of having two variables in these two equations m and n we are only having one variable that is k what we can do is since the coordinates of this point are given to us so we can simply equate by equating value of x like according to the formula it should be this 3k minus 6 upon k plus 1 and this is equal to minus 4. This formula represents the value minus 4. So I am simply equating it. So this becomes 3k minus 6 is equal to minus 4k minus 4. Now simplify this 3k plus 4k. This is equal to minus 4 plus 6. 7k is equal to 6 minus 4 is 2. Right? So here k comes out to be 2 by 7. Right? See, here you had to solve only one equation to get the value of k. This is the benefit. Otherwise, if you would have taken it as m is to n, you would have to solve these two variables to get the value of m and n both. So what we can simply do here is 2 by 7 is the value of k. We had assumed that the ratio be k is to 1. So we write k as 2 by 7 is to 1. So the required ratio is 2 is to 7. We simply multiply both the parts by 7 or you can say that the 7 goes to right hand side and the ratio becomes 2 is to 7. So we had we have minimized our calculation by using this thing k is to 1. The ratio required ratio is 2 is to 7. Right? Find the coordinates of the points of tri section of the line segment joining the points A and B. This question is very simple, but I don't know regarding the language or something. Children find it difficult solving this question. Trisection. Bisection is something by to bisect something is means to divide something into two equal parts. Trisection means to divide something into three equal parts. Find the coordinates of the points of trisection. A A is two comma minus two. Then we have B, which is minus 7, 4. Now, if we have to do three equal parts of this line segment, we have to plot two points like this. Let this be P, this be Q. So that we have three equal parts of the line segment AB. Right? That means we have to find the coordinates of these two points P and Q so that the line segment AB gets divided into three equal parts. This is called trisection. To divide something into three equal parts. Okay, now 
first of all we have to find p you can see that if we forget about this point q right now what is the ratio of ap ap and pb since i have located q here you can see that forget about q right now ap and pb if we are talking about ap ap represents one part and pb represents two parts so the ratio of ap and pb becomes 1 is to 2 1 is to 2 that means uh, you have to find the coordinates of p by using this ratio 1 is to 2 that means p is dividing ab in the ratio 1 is to 2 so coordinates of coordinates of p according to this ratio 1 is to 2 x becomes I'm writing formula here. X is m x two plus n x one upon m plus n. Same is the case of y. M y two plus n y one upon m plus n. So one gets multiplied by minus seven, which is minus seven. Plus two gets multiplied by two. Two two is a four. Upon one plus two, that is three. This is minus seven plus four is minus three by three. That is minus one. For y, one gets multiplied by four, which is four. Then two gets multiplied by minus two, which is minus four upon three. So we have zero by three, which is zero. So the coordinates of p comes out to be minus one comma zero. Right. Now we have found the value of p here. Next, we have to find the coordinates of q. Coordinates of q. Now this can be done in two different ways. This is very easy. Either you can do that. Now removing this p, we have a q is two q b. A q is two b q. As two is two one. A Q is to B Q as two is to one. So using this thing, you can find this. Or the easier way is if P is taken as minus one comma zero. From here you can see that P P Q is equal to B Q. We have three equal parts. Three equal parts. That means Q becomes the midpoint of P B. Right? Q is the midpoint. midpoint of bp or pb so you can do it orally now if you have to find the coordinates of q that is minus 1 plus minus 7 by 2 q is a midpoint for pb i hope this is clear now otherwise you can do it this way also this is aq is to bq is 2 is to 1 the bigger part is earlier and then the smaller part is 1 for A Q and B, A Q is to B Q is two is to one. You can use section formula in that case. Otherwise, you have found P. Q is the midpoint of B P. So x one plus x two by two, and y one plus y two by two. This is minus eight by two and four by two. So this is minus four comma two. So the coordinates of Q becomes. Minus four comma two. So P is minus one comma zero and Q is minus four comma two. Right. So this is the last question. I have almost taken different type of questions in this slide so that when we are doing it in the exercise, you become comfortable with these concepts. So find the ratio in which the y-axis divides the line segment joining the points this five comma minus six and this. Try to visualize this thing because it becomes easier. This is your y-axis. Let's say you have a point A which is five comma minus six. I'm not locating it exactly. Don't uh, be misguided. Like this is uh, x was y positive and y negative, so it should not be here. I'm just making a rough picture. 
b is minus 1 comma minus 4. Now he says find the ratio in which y axis divides the line segment joining the points a and b. So this is a y axis. What is the characteristics of y axis? You know, all the points on the y axis have their x coordinate 0. This kind of question you always get in your board papers. So this is the only thing you have to keep in mind. On the y axis, x coordinate is 0. On the x axis, y coordinate is always 0. Right? You can see that. I can just explain you. If you have this point 1, 2, as we had learned to locate the point, this is 2, comma 2, let's say. So what about this point? If we write the coordinates of this point, this is 2, comma 0. Because on the x-axis, you are moving two units. But on the y-axis, you are not moving at all. So the distance on y-axis is 0. This 1 represents 1, comma 0. And so on. This represents minus 3, comma 0. So all the points on x-axis, they have their y-coordinate 0. Like here it is 2, 1, 2 on the y-axis. This represents 0, comma 2. The coordinates of this point is 0, comma 2. Because on the x-axis, we, have, we haven't gone to left or right. We have just come to come to two units above origin. That means we are moving on y-axis, but we are not moving left or right. That means x-coordinate is 0. So all the points on y-axis have their x-coordinate 0. All the points on x-axis have their y-coordinate 0. So we have to find the ratio. Let us say, let the ratio be k is to 1. I have told you, it's always beneficial to do it this way. Whenever we have to find the ratio, let the ratio be k is to 1 instead of m is to n. Now this is the point P. Let this be x comma y and the ratio be k is to 1. Now I apply this formula. Coordinates, coordinates of P. For x coordinate, you write former ratio letter coordinate. K gets multiplied by minus 1, minus K. Add it to 1 gets multiplied by 5 upon K plus 1. Y is K gets multiplied by minus 4, minus 4 K. 1 gets multiplied by minus 6, so it is minus 6 upon K plus 1. Right? Now we have found the coordinates in terms of k. What extra thing is given? Here the coordinates are not given. In the previous question where we had done with k, k and 1, coordinates were given. Here the only thing is that this point in the what ratio the y axis, this point is represented on the y axis. So on y axis, x coordinate is always 0. Right? So what we can do? We can equate the x coordinate of point P to 0. This is 0. Now this whole thing goes to 0 on the RHS. So this becomes minus k plus 5 is equal to 0. So we can write k is equal to 5. Right? So k we have found as 5. So the required ratio becomes, required ratio is k is to 1, that means 5 is to 1. That is y axis divides AB, divides AB in the ratio 5 is to 1. In the ratio 5 is to 1. Right? So this was all about the different kind of questions you will be dealing in this chapter and all the important terms and formulae. So this was only the introduction of this chapter. We will be solving two exercises in the next two videos. I hope these things are clear. If you liked watching this video, please do not forget to share it with your friends and subscribe it. Thank you.